Hello, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Very happy to have Kevin and Taylor with Mathers on the Map back on the channel. We did a tour exactly three years ago with their old van, and they travel full time. They travel all over the country, Baja up to Canada. Well, now they have a newborn. They sold that van. They built out this new van to suit their family, and they're going to give us a tour. So join us. Hey Patrick, thanks for having us back on the channel. I am Taylor, this is Wyatt. And I'm Kevin, and this is our new van, a 170 2022 4x4 Sprinter van. And we basically got this one because of this little guy. Our last van, we took it all over the country for the last, what, two, three years? Yeah. Canada, all uh -huh. over the United States, yeah, down to Mexico. But we only had two seats, so this van now has three seats, Technically four, if we wanted to add one more later down the road. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we just finished this build. We took a really long shakedown trip up to Newfoundland and Nova Scotia, which was a little bit long for a shakedown trip, but we're ready to go. We're ready to give you guys a tour of this thing and excited to be back. We're gonna divide and conquer here because it's gonna be a little bit difficult doing the tour with this guy. So uh, from our own van tour. Yeah, Taylor's gonna take him. We'll and be back. Yeah. So this van is built for full-time travel, which means we have a ton of storage. We, let, we learned from the last one that storage is pretty key when you're traveling full-time and you gotta condense everything that you have in a home into a van. So that's why storage is critical here. And the first thing here, we have this nice little cubby because this is kind of like wasted space in a van and some people do drawers or something. This is really just simple magnets and it's just, you know, really easy and convenient. Another thing about van life is you want to make your life as convenient as possible because you're in such a tight space. So that's something to consider and something that we took from our last experience and put it into this one. So welcome to our home. This, let me give you a quick little lay of the land. So we have obviously our two driver and passenger seats up front. We have four or two seats here on the bench seat that is completely convertible. And this is where our baby sits and sleeps as well when we convert it into his crib. Then we have our shower on the driver's side, our kitchen galley on the passenger, and then our bed space in the back. So now let me dive into a little bit more detail up here. So we have two swivel seats and we bought this van with programmable uh, settings for each seat. So the third setting here is for the swivel. So I'm able to let the memory move the seat. So it's a nice fluid and easy way to uh, swivel in our last van we had to you know go back and forth like 20 times it was kind of a pain in the butt then we just hit the button again and let the seat do its thing and i could work on this seat as well while that's going on in terms of your everyday eating and stuff we wanted to have a full complete kitchen net area so we have the lagoon swivel here and i could just pull the table out And if that seat is swiveled as well, we could have four comfortably sit, move the table around so everybody can get in a position and have a nice meal as a family because we hope to grow with Wyatt in here and maybe have another one later down the road. So we'll have a complete area for all our meals at, at night. We had some dead space in the van here. So you could see these green boxes and this is just additional storage this is just on a simple piano hinge, but again, when you're living full time, you want as much stuff, you want as much storage as possible. I'm going to kind of reiterate that again and again, so hopefully it's not too annoying. We have one on this side as well, and then we have a large storage bin that's underneath his seat that extends all the way to the sliding door. One of the coolest features of this van is our heating system. We actually have heated floors in this van and that's kind of a luxury thing that you see in luxury homes, but we have it in our van and we have PEX running all the way down, up and down the galley and actually wrapping around this seat. So when it's nice and cold outside, we could just turn on our heated floors. We don't have to use our heated air system and we have warm toasty toes 
in the winter in the van, which in our last van, we had no insulation on the floor. So one of the biggest problems was your feet were always freezing. Now they're nice and warm. It's, it's really, really nice. I'm not going to lie. In terms of heat management as well, we have the curtains here. We also have insulated window covers for the front, but the curtain, believe it or not, does a really good job containing the heat and heat management for a baby is really, really important. So we typically put this down and it also gives you plenty of privacy at night as well. Over here, you might be wondering what this black screen thing is. And this is actually our bug screen and it's completely sealed through. Just let that drop. Pull these zippers down. And then it's completely magnetic. So this is gonna be great when we take the van down to Mexico and wanna have the doors open all day long. We don't have to worry about any bugs coming in. And it's pretty easy to just go in and out of the van. And voila, you're in here. We also have it on the back doors as well. Above the curtains over here, we have additional storage. So we have two cubbies and there's a wall divider in between. And again, this is just kind of useless space unless you build an overhead cabinet. A lot of folks don't put the shelves here or the cabinet doors, but we wanted that in place. Throughout the walls, we have Havelock wool insulation and that's throughout the side walls too. For ventilation, we have the Max Air Fan and we also have a lot of windows. Here we have the sliding windows. And that, this is really nice for the, with the fan because you're able to push or pull air out. And it really, we have an AC in the back, but unless it's super, super hot, we could just suck the air right through and open up our windows. And there's plenty of ventilation, plenty of airflow, which keeps the van cool. On this side, we have the window within the window itself. And it has a built-in screen right here. And it slides out like an awning, which is nice because you can have the window completely open while it's raining and it's blocked by the awning. Here we have another window cover by the Wonderful, and this is completely blacked out and insulated, and it has magnets on it as well, so we can leave it on the, win on the door while we're using it, and that's just really convenient because we don't have to put it away. In terms of more storage, we have the bamboo little cubbies here, and again, this is just kind of wasted space unless you can make something out of it. So this is just a little bit additional storage. And if you take a look at the back doors, we have two cubbies up there and then we have two sliding windows in the bed area as well. One thing I wanna mention before I trade off the tailor here is I wanna showcase how this crib seat works. And it's actually pretty simple and a pretty cool design. So this thing actually will fold flat so this folds this way, this pulls out, and then this folds flat like so, and there you go. So what we do for Wyatt is we push this bed all the way to the wall here. So then we have a crib railing that I just built that's gonna connect from here like a U and go all the way. So he's gonna be contained here. And if you were traveling with, maybe your child is a little bit bigger or three adults, you could swivel the front seat, which I might as well show you here. Let me just set the memory. And here. And you kind of have almost, let's see. I'm 6'1", so let's say like five and a half feet of, of length. So it's not perfect, but it's definitely workable and you could probably, you could sleep comfortable in here. So this is another reason why we wanted this seat because it can grow with us as a family when Wyatt gets older. Lastly, before I trade off the tailor, this is Wyatt's storage bin. Uh, he has his own little buckets for all his stuff. Taylor uh, knows this area a little bit better than I do, I'm not gonna lie, but yeah, he has his own space. These two are his. All right, so as Kevin may have mentioned, we learned a lot from our previous build, which brings us to this build and all of the changes that we made for this particular build. 
Um, for us, it's really important for us to have a full bathroom and a full kitchen. That was a no-brainer for me, and it was a non-negotiable. Um, but with the seat, it's a little bit more crammed in here. So for our full kitchen, we had to go with a slanted or a cut off countertop, um, which made making this a little bit more tricky than the first build. All of these drawers right here are all on an angle, which is great for storage, but was a pain in the butt for Kevin to build out. In addition, we like the propane stovetop on top, like always. We don't like the ones that necessarily go underneath because it's just kind of a pain. We use them every day. So to bring it in and out and wait for it to cool down is kind of a process for us. So we always prefer the on countertop ranges. Um, and, we just get, and we just get these small little propane tanks, um, which honestly lasts us about a week at least, maybe two weeks. Um, so that works for us. I know that there's other options out there, but this is just the option that works best for us. Um, in addition, I always want it to look like a home kitchen. So I wanted to go real tile, but because this build was already getting pretty crazy, we went with peel and stick, which I think actually looks great. Um, it's much lighter than our previous tile was in our first van because we did go tile in that one, um, but I think it looks just as good. Uh, we went with a 110 refrigerator. Um, since there are three of us, fridge space is pretty important between why it's bottles, his food, our food, a lot of the food we eat goes in the refrigerator goes in the refrigerator for the most part. So having the biggest one that we could possibly fit in here was a non-negotiable as well. We also went with the largest sink that we could. Um, it's still small RV style sink, but I mean, it's as big as we could make it. Um, and then we have our Guzzle H2O. Uh, which is our water filter underneath. Uh, so everything has housed right here and we can have drinkable water through this faucet. In our first van, we had two different faucets, one for drinkable water and one for like washing dishes and things like this. But this is really nice because it's all in this same faucet and we don't have to worry about multiples. Uh, lastly, we did three extra drawers right here for kitchen utensils and extra things that you need in a kitchen that you don't necessarily need 24 seven, but are nice to have a uh, Keurig machine because you know, gotta have the coffee. And then we did two uppers as well for all of our pots and pans and blenders and toothbrushes. They're a bit messy right now because we drove, but you get the hang of it. Moving along to our full bath, we, did a full bath in the last one and I absolutely loved it. I know it does take up a lot of space in the van, but for us, we just really enjoy having a bathroom with a toilet. Um, we went with the Palisade waterproof tiles, which I think looks so much better than the FRP that we did the first time and a nice cedar ceiling to kind of take away from the I didn't want it all to be white. I wanted there to be some wood elements, some natural elements. Um, we also went with a 1.5 gallon shower head so that we could try to uh, reserve as much water as possible. Um, and this one actually does have an on off switch on here. So you're not always going to the mixer to turn the water on and off, which is a nice little feature. Uh, we also always put one of these in our van because if you live in a van, you realize that when you're driving, all of those shampoo, conditioner, uh, body wash bottles, they just go everywhere. So this just keeps it nice and consolidated. We also have the uh, Nautilus self-cleaning shower door. We were actually thinking in this build to go with a half wall and do a shower curtain. Um, but with the time that that takes to dry and then you kind of have it flying all over the place, um, we decided that this was probably the best bet again, just because it's all tucked away. It's nice and clean. It's easy to use. Um, for us, it's just great. And then in this build, we went with the Ogo toilet. It's actually, um, in my opinion, 
the best toilet on the market because it has the best solution for females who need to use the bathroom. You don't have to scoot up too far or move back too far. It's just the way that it's set up is very nice to use the bathroom. Um, and then it actually has the largest pee jug on the market. Um, so for those who have a bathroom in their van, you know that you're constantly emptying that if you're using it because, I mean, it fills up rather quickly. Um, and this one has the largest one. So that was really important for us. It also, the, the poop area is a jug that you can take out. So you're not use it you're not taking out the entire toilet when you go to change out that um area the compost um of the toilet you can just bring out that one little part rather than the entire toilet which makes it much easier to clean and all of that kind of stuff and lastly when we need to take a shower we actually remove the toilet this toilet is uh does have an electric agitator as well as a vent fan um so we tuck those back in the wall and cover it with this which makes it completely waterproof um, and then all of the water goes down into a gray tank that we have attached to an electric ball valve. So whenever we're in an appropriate place to drop, we can just click the button, waste or our wastewater will go down and we don't have to worry about it. Now we will move on to this second bedroom slash kitchen area. It's kind of used for both in this van um, because we do have a microwave, which we weren't really sure about at first, but after our shakedown trip, we absolutely loved it. We used it all the time. So this was great to have. It just makes cooking quickly super convenient. Um, so I would definitely recommend it if you're thinking about it. Um, we also, if you live tiny, you know that each and every space is very important. So we even built into this van a little bit just for areas for laptops or iPads or little extra things that we wanted that were easy, easily accessible. Um, we also did power in here too, just in case we do put in uh, laptops or whatever, everything can be charged while we're driving while it's in place, which was important to us. Next, we have this drawer, which kind of acts as like our little uh, medicine closet. Um, so we keep all of our, you know, shower stuff, Wyatt stuff, any kind of uh, miscellaneous things kind of go in there. Now moving on to the bed area. As you can see, it is a little shorter than your average bed. Kevin is 6'1", uh, so sleeping side to side without bump outs is out of the question. Not to mention you have to kind of go over top of your partner, which we don't really like. So we always go with the front to back method. Um, and this one we did make shorter because we added this bump out area. where we just add an extra piece of the mattress. It is a little bit lower, um, but Kevin's feet fit right here and he pretty much sleeps right in the middle of the bed and it's absolutely perfect, it works for us. So it gives us a little bit more space with our countertops and with our kitchen, but it also makes it so that he can sleep comfortably at night. Underneath of this bump out, we have our laundry area. Uh, Anyone who lives in a van, obviously you accumulate a lot of laundry. Um, and if you don't have a laundry area, you're putting it in with your clean clothes. And then when it comes time to do laundry, you're kind of searching all over for it. So this just makes it super easy. Everything's in one place and we just like having a laundry bin. Moving along to our dressers. Our dressers are pretty much every single one of these upper cabinets. Um, we use this for our clothes, anything that we kind of want to bring. So I keep books and all that kind of stuff, but it's just extra storage for us, um, Kevin and I, that doesn't include like food storage or Wyatt storage or anything like that. We also sometimes like to watch TV. It rarely happens, but if we can, we have a nice little iPad holder. In our last van, we didn't have one and we were either just holding the iPad or the computer and it was driving us nuts. So this one, we just put in a little iPad holder. Lastly, we put in these reading lights back here, which are probably our most used lights. When Wyatt's asleep, it's really hard for us to keep all the lights on, obviously, because it will wake him up. So these have become super, super handy and we use them every night, whether we're reading, working, or just kind of hanging out 
they ha- they're just dim enough that they don't bother him and they give us good lighting. Um, the other thing we wanted in this van was obviously the full windows, which Kevin has already talked about, but at night we do have window covers for both of these and these window covers for the back that allow us good privacy, which was obviously very important. Lastly, right above my head is our Velet AC, uh, which honestly we used a lot while we were building since we were building in the middle of summer and it was so, so hot. But because our shakedown trip was in Newfoundland and Canada, we haven't really got to use it, but we are super stoked on using it because it worked great in the summertime. So we can't wait to put it to the test. All right, so that's it for the inside. Kevin is gonna take you around back to show you all of the electrical system and the plumbing system. Actually, there's one more thing I wanna show you guys before we go to the garage, which is our electrical command center. So here we have our monitor for our Rixon's heating system, which is where we can control our heated floors. And we can control that three methods via the furnace, electric if we're plugged into shore power, or off our engine, which is really cool because we could literally have heated floors and hot water while we're driving, which is amazing. We could use the waste heat from the engine and not use any resources here to generate that heat. Below it is our Serbo GX. We have all Victron components, which we'll see in a minute, but this is where we can see how much solar we're getting, how much AC, how much we're drawing from a DC and AC perspective. So it gives a nice visual of our entire system. We also have an analog water meter. Our tank's empty right now, but when this is full, we have 36 gallons of fresh water. And then we have three toggle switches here for our water pump, our electric ball valve on our gray tank, and for our recirculation pumps. We have a recirculation pump for our hot water line, so we don't have to waste any hot water throughout our van. We don't have to wait for that cold water to go through like you kind of do at a home. We hit the recirculation pump and we have instant hot water, which is amazing because water is a vital limited resource in a van and you don't want to waste any of it. All right, so let's go see what the systems actually look like here in the back of the van. Really quick, we do have our shore power inlet right here if we want to connect the shore power. We also added some truck bed liner to protect it and give it a little bit more of an aesthetic mean look that we're looking for. Back here we have our really big garage and we wanted a big space for all of our toys and stuff we like to surf and snowboard so we could fit that in here we need to think about a baby stroller now and all of his we have a baby swing believe it or not so we could fit a ton back here and then we have our two systems on both sides on the left side here is our water system and our hot water heating system as well so we have a 36 gallon wheel well fresh water water tank and then you might be looking at all of these components here. We have a hydronic heating system by Rickson's and that controls our hot air, our hot water, as well as our heated floors. If you look up, we have holes in the bed to help with ventilation with the mattress to prevent mold. We have the Ikea slats, which is a super cost-effective way to build your bed platform. And over here, we have a water mixer for an outdoor shower with hot and cold water, which is really nice if you're coming back from the beach, want to get the water or the sand off your feet and just clean up before entering the van. On the passenger side here, we have our electrical system, which we have two 270 amp hour Battleborn batteries for a total of 540 amp hours. We have a big Victron 3000 watt inverter, and then we have all other Victron components with the Orion DC to DC charger, the smart, the solar charge controller, as well as our other components for our Starlink system. For solar, we have 680 watts of walkable solar panels up on the roof. And this is where we control all of our breakers and fuses for our 12 volt and 120 volt systems. We also have a little 12 volt accessory here. You never know when you need to plug something in. And we also have the bug screen in the back here, which I briefly mentioned when we showed the sliding door one. We have the door panels as well on the bottom parts of the doors on both sides. So again, just a little bit more storage. And then we also got this little step here. This is from Harbor Freight and it's just really simple. When we were building, the four x four van is pretty tall. So our knees were starting to hurt without this thing. So this was nice. As we make our way onto the side of the van, this is where we have our water fill. We went with the outdoor 
water fill inlet instead of the indoor, just because when you're traveling in the winter time and it's freezing outside, you're gonna have to open up your doors and that gets pretty cold. So now that we have a baby, we don't wanna let that cold air in, which is why we went to this guy. We have the Falcon Wild Peaks on the, for the tires, which are great for sand and all terrain and snow. So we don't have to worry about that. In addition to the four wheel drive, because in our last van we had two wheel drive. We got stuck in Idaho. We had to use our traction boards. Wasn't that fun. So now that we have the four by four, we can go a little deeper on the sand in Baja and just go explore a little further. For our ladders and our roof rack, we went with Orion van made gear. So this is the ladder itself. We have the surf poles on it or the surf hooks as well as the surf pole. So when we went to Canada, we took our surfboards and when we go to Mexico in our next trip, we're going to be having two surfboards on these hooks surfboard in the back, we're gonna be fully loaded. So if you look up on the roof, we have a light bar in the front with our Starlink next to our Max Air fan, a deck panel for additional storage, and then the four 170 watt walkable solar panels leading to the AC, as well as two little deck panels parallel to the AC. And we wanted to have a walkable space because if it's covered in snow, we wanna be able to get up there and brush that snow off so we can continue getting that solar. Lastly, we added these running boards right here as well, just because the van is quite high and just makes it easier on the knees. And then we have fog lights here as well, which are great for when you're driving in super snowy weather and it's pretty dark outside. Thank you, Patrick, for having us. I bet you guys are all wondering just about how long this build took. It roughly took us a year, but that was with moving, traveling, and having little Wyatt here. So we had a few obstacles during the build. Our summer was full time on the van every single day. And when once he went to bed, it meant we got to work. So we were working long into the night. So I think without having a baby and moving, we probably could have got it done with like six, seven months, maybe. Yeah. There was also a lot of analysis paralysis at the beginning. So had we been able to just jump right in from the start, I think we would have probably been able to move faster. But there was just a lot of plumbing, electrical, you know, all the things a, that... A new layout and a new heating system with the hydronics heat system, the heated floors. I had to wrap my head around how it was going to do it or how we were going to do it. But once we did it, it was actually pretty easy. Um, in terms of budget, I'm sure you guys are wondering what a DIY build would cost. All in, this is roughly a fifty-five to sixty thousand dollar build. I don't have the numbers right in front of me, so that's the ballpark range. Um, so it's definitely pricey, but you get a luxury vehicle, and it's definitely more. But it's definitely cheaper than paying someone professionally to build it. So if you want to save money, you got to go the DIY route, but that means you got to put a lot of hours in. You also don't necessarily need a $60,000 build if that's right. not what you're into. For so, sure. I mean, these builds can be done for a much cheaper or much more expensive cost, depending on what you're really looking for. Yeah. Plus, you guys started out with a brand new van, so there was additional costs there on top of the build. Yep, so we actually are still have a loan on the van. So yep. we bought the van brand new, which was really, really nice because it's going to last forever. But yeah, we have that additional cost as well. So all in, we're probably looking at like 125000 That's a pretty good budget. I mean, it, it, you kept it down. And you got some really cool stuff in here. Right. You got all the top shelf Victron components. You have a mega lithium battery bank system. Yep. You got all those exterior accessories. They add up to a lot of money. Exactly. And you, you also did a full build series on your YouTube channel. And I suggest you guys, if you haven't seen Matters on the map yet, they went through everything in this van on how to build it. And a lot of people that do their own builds don't actually do that. That's what took you guys so long oh, to build yeah. it. That's oh, a yeah. very that is a good point. critical point that I guess we just don't even think about because that's what we do. We do van build series when we build our vans. We did it for the first van and this one. So, yeah, we yeah. are filming detailed Everything. videos with B-roll. Like, they're they're not just cut and dry. Like, van build series 1.0 might have been oh, cut and dry. dry. Van build series 2.0 was, you know, we've been YouTubing for quite a bit now. So, it, it's definitely, the, the effort is there. And the videos are great. And I, I love the video that you did the floor when you talked about the radiant heat in the floor. Because that's something, it's not new, but it's sort of new to me because I haven't had any builders that did that before. Was that tough to do? That it was, was actually... honestly probably one of my favorite projects. It fit together like a puzzle. So it was super, super easy, actually, once we were putting it in. 
Um, and it was just, it was kind of fun. So we bought the flooring package with the Rickson's right. hydronic heating system. So Just Roaming is the company that they actually CNC route the lines for the PEX. So like Taylor said, it comes in a puzzle piece. You're playing Tetris to put the floor together and then you're just routing the PEX through. So if you're going to do a DIY heated floor and try and save the money, you're going to have to CNC route that yourself, which would be a lot Much more tedious. more difficult. A lot more difficult. You got to be careful not to go through your subfloor. Ours is only an inch, which is critical because I'm six one. I don't want to be ducking my head. So, but then yeah. you had to know the layout that you were designing before you even got to that step. Correct. Oh, yeah. Because they, they, you sent them plans and they routed in the. the for, yeah, for they sure. even uh, put in some warm pex lines between these two seats so that when you're sitting at the dinette, we have warm toes. But that took extra i think this thinking. build was right? <laughs> exhausting mentally rather than physically like there's the 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 brain power went <laughs> to build this van was pretty exhausting and i watched uh, several of your videos you have like a reoccurring character that in your video oh, <laughs> Glenn. yeah we if you want to check out our build series you'll meet our our neighbor who's a character he's the man though we love him glenn he's yeah. Yeah. He's the best. <laughs> well, yeah, I'll make great. sure I put links in the description to your website, your social media, and the website that we're going to link to is actually going to be so you have a material list so yeah. our viewers could kind of see all the different things. Exactly. So if you go to our website, mattersonthemap.com, um, Patrick will link it below, but we'll have a parts list of every component in the van. And then maybe if we get creative, maybe we could link the build series videos to that as well, just to make it a little bit more helpful. Yeah, for sure. Well, awesome. Pleasure to have you guys back on the channel. Good to see that you're still at the van life. Now you sold your last van. You missed it and you built this one. Is that the story? Yeah, well, I mean, people say you can't travel with a baby, but I think we're going to try to prove those naysayers wrong. And we had a successful trip in Canada, so now it's time to take the van to the next country in Mexico and maybe... Maybe go a little further. We'll see. We'll see. But yeah, thank you, Patrick, for having us. It was a blast. And uh, yeah. Thank you. We're really appreciative. Well, thank it's a you. chilly winter day here in New Jersey, New Year's Eve, New 2023. Year's Eve. Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. See Happy you New next Year. Time.